الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We continue inshallah ta'ala in the subject of al-fiqh in the chapter of al-bayr buying and selling and the last thing we talked about was the shurud fi al-bayr the conditions or stipulations in the contracts of buying and selling. And that this is different than شروط البيع وشروط صحة البيع the conditions of the validity of the contract. And the ulama they mention or they say both are شروط both are conditions but one شروط البيع there is to be known by the Sharah to be known by the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, the seven conditions. Then الشروط في البيع it's not conditions to be known in the Shara or in the Deen of Islam in the Quran and the Sunnah, but it's shurut conditions that are uh, put or stipulated by one or both of the two ends of the contract, whether it's for one or the other, or with regards to al mabi itself, the commodity itself, or the thing that they're selling or buying, or with regards to the uh, the value or the money. So these are conditions. That is the rule of it. Everything is permissible unless unless proven otherwise. So there are certain principles that needs to be, of course, observed. And uh, one of them, before we continue, which is, uh, I'm not sure if it's mentioned or it's going to be mentioned, but one of the, the things that needs to be considered here in the subject of uh, al-mu'amalat in general is al-urf. And the urf is the norm. Of the people, and the urf in the shara in the deen is is is, a, is something that is a part of the deen to observe the norms as long as it does not contradict with what's in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet So there's a very famous principle asl in matters of fiqh, where it say al ma'roof urfan kan mashruti shartan. المعروف عرفا كالمشروط شرطا and remember this inshallah which means المعروف المعروف is what's known to be عرفا to be the norm of the people and العرف خذ العرفة خذ خذ العرفة وأمر خذ العفو وأمر بالعرف وأعرض عن الجاهلين as Allah سبحانه وتعالى says وأمر بالعرف command what is known to the people and uh, this is something uh, what, it, what is meant by this is al ma'ruf urfan what is known to be the norm of the people is kal mashruti shartan is like the condition when it's conditioned meaning if if people in their locality in the place that they live in what's known to them is like a condition it doesn't have to be stipulated in the contract if it's well known not known to a person or two or three it's something that is well established as the norm of the people, and that norm doesn't have to be in the knowledge of every person, but in whatever uh, type of or branch of business that they're in. <clears throat> it's known to those who buy and sell, for example, that I'm, I'm making this up, I'm not sure if it's, if it's known or it's by the law, but say, for example, it's known that they have 14 days to return whatever they purchase. This is known. So you don't have to write it in the contract. It's already known. Unless is to be stipulated otherwise. Or even one, one of the very famous ones in Aqd al-Nikah, for example, in the marriage contract, uh, to some parts of the world, it's well known that the mahr is uh, to be divided into muqaddam and muakhar. So uh, some part that the person would pay uh, right away and another part he would delay it as a loan, as a debt on him. And it becomes then obligatory if, if a person dies or in times of talaq or divorce. So it doesn't have to be even stipulated in the contract if it's well known that there is something like this. So again, we're not going to discuss this. It's a huge mabhath. It's a huge subject in matters of fiqh. So just to consider that, that you would see many or some of the rulings, the ulama would always refer to the urf. As long as it's not uh, against anything in the Quran and the Sunnah, since again, the original ruling with al-mu'amalat, al-ibah. Everything is permissible 
unless proven otherwise. So, uh, and, and the conditions that we talked about for the there are so many, uh, there might be so many examples that uh, maybe we can, uh, you know, see or, or discuss, but we get to know that the different types of it, as we heard, one of it is, is the condition that is sahih, uh, whether it's to, with regards to the thaman or the price of things uh, for uh, the mushtari or for the one that is purchasing for his benefit to delay or to defer the payment or some of it, this is valid, that's fine. As long as it's clear and as long as there's no gharar, deception or jahala or uh, not knowing and things of that nature. Or ar-rahn wal-dameen, as we heard, this is for the uh, seller. He wants to have a collateral, he wants to have someone to guarantee or guarantor for the purchasing. That's fine. And that's this one of the things that strengthen the buying and selling, encourages people to buy and sell because they will have means of security, they can secure whatever they are seeking. And it's from the maslahat al-aqt, as we heard. I'm repeating this so that it's clear, inshallah. And we have the hadith of the Prophet, والسلام, al-Muslimuna ala shurutihim. The Muslims are upon their shurut, their conditions. Illa shartan ahalla haraman aw harram ahalan. Unless it's the condition permit something haram or forbid something uh, that is halal. So, which is a rule in anything. So, any condition, if it's against the deen, against the sharia, then it's not to be considered whatsoever. And that will be uh, in the category of shurut al fasida the corrupted or the non-valid conditions in buying and selling. Some of it would void the contract completely, and uh, other types of it would be invalid, but it does not invalidate the contract itself. Uh, and that's what the two categories of al-fasid, or the what is corrupted, um, <clears throat> and as we mentioned, when it comes to what's permissible, also, if a person would stipulate in the contract that he wants a specific characteristics or something that is, when in whatever he's purchasing, if he's purchasing a land, he stipulate that it's uh, a land, a land that you can plant things in it. For example, if the laws of uh, the county, whatever that he is in, he can he cannot have a farm there. So he would make a stipulation, I want to make it as a farm. So as a condition, this is something that is, you know, it's uh, I would be able to make it as a farm. So this is a condition that means if it's not going to, and the other side should know, if it's uh, not going to happen, then he has the right to uh, void the contract. Uh, so any different types of conditions that he wanted flat, he wanted this, he wanted that, he wants uh, to make sure that the car is uh, have air conditioning, uh, things of that nature. And that's that's fine, that's permissible, even if it's more than one condition. And uh, the norm is that if something a person purchases that's different than something has ma'ib or aib or uh, deficiency in it, which a person has the right to return something if he has if it has deficiency, right? So, for example, one of the things that back home they put it, you would find it in many of the stores, they would put a big sign you know, behind the cashier saying, al budaa al mubaa la turad wa la Right? The, the sold merchandise is not to be returned and it's not to be exchanged. Once you're not stepping out of the store, you're done. Once you pay, it's over with. Right? This is... Uh, in itself, like this, in the absolute sense, is not permissible. Why? Because it has to have some... This is a condition. He's having a condition here for everyone to see that if you're purchasing something, I have a, he doesn't have to write a contract with you. It's already as a condition. He made that as a condition. But that's not a valid condition. Why? Because if you're purchasing something and there's a deficiency, and there's something wrong with it, right, he has to return it back. Unless he would tell you that it has this, you agree, sure, and then you buy it, that's fine. But if he doesn't tell you, right, and it's it has the aib or the, the deficiency in it when you purchased it, so you have the right to return it back. But for someone to stipulate in the contract that it's not going to be deficient in the future, that's also shartun fasit. Right? This is a, a non-valid condition. Because that's majul. This is you don't know what's going to happen after a day or two. So, someone to make a condition: I'm going to buy this car, but as long as 
you know, with, with the warranty, this is in some situations it can be permissible. With, but someone would say, as long as it doesn't break for a year, you know, this is by itself like this, this is not valid. Uh, so, but you know, the issue of the conditions, it's something that is either in the maslaha and the benefit of the contract, or it's something that would negate it or make something uh, haram or anything of that nature. Uh, it's uh, it's difficult to leave it because there's so many examples, but we'll leave it like that, inshallah. Then after that, uh, the subject of al bayu' al manhi anha. So as long as we're in, in this level, we know there is shurut, there is shartun sahih, or shartun fasid, and the shart al fasid, minhu ma yubtal al aqt. Some of it would make the contract void, and some of it is not making the contract void. And do you remember what makes the contract void in the shurut al fasida? One 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 major thing, which is the thing that makes the contract void, which is ishtarat, another contract. Uh, as he says, كَشْتَرَاتِ أَحَدِهِمْ عَلَى الْأَخَرَ عَقْدًا أَخَرَ كَسَلَفٍ وَبَيْعٍ وَإِجَارَةٍ وَصَرْفٍ And for the sake of many things has might have differences of opinions, but just if you came across something, the worst of it, which is agreed upon, is when someone would have both بَيْعْ وَسَلَفْ بَيْعْ وَدَيْن together. Or دَيْن بِالدَيْن of course is haram, but to sell something with a condition that you give me a loan, this is agreed upon. But two contracts in one, this can be tricky sometimes. But we we don't want to get into this. But I mean, for example, you're buying two things at the same time. Uh, is it one depending on the other, or as a condition for the other, or are you just purchasing two things from the person? So he likes you because you're coming to purchasing two pieces of land, right? So he you purchase the first one and the second one. Is it the first one a condition for the second one, or the second one is a condition for the first one? So uh, this is uh, so in 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 the norm. Of the of, of the normal case that it's it's okay having more than one contract as long as he does not make it as a condition I would sell you this if you buy this or I sell you this if you give me this uh, these types of things. The the buyur that is forbidden, uh, as he says, Abah al Islam bayga kulli shay yajlubu al khair wal barak. Everything the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is permissible in it to sell anything as long as it brings good and barakah and blessings. And forbade some of the buyu' some of the transactions or buying and selling. And now this is the the, the wisdom or, or the things in, in general what makes the buying and selling uh, haram. He said al-jahala wal gharar The word al-jahala and the word al-gharar we need to remember them in Arabic like this. Al-jahala wal gharar. Al-jahala from al jah Ignorance or not knowing. So, and there's differences of course between al-jahala and al-gharar is deception. That's uh, basically the one of the meanings here. But sometimes they something is gharar and the gharar is because of the jahala. So al-gharar is with regards to something that you don't know the, the outcome of it. What's going to happen next or what is... You know, uh, this is al-gharar. Versus al-jahala, you're buying something that you don't know. So uh, having the lack of knowledge of what you're purchasing versus that the contract is not really clear of who's going to gain what, who's going to get what. As a major difference between both is, or a clear difference, al-gharar, for example, if people do not um, make it clear that what is the price of what they're purchasing. So they're sitting and talking, so is uh, if you pay now 1000 if you pay after a month it's uh, 1500 and then they the, they're done with not really knowing what the person is going to do he can come tomorrow with 1000 he can come after a month for 1500 so this is even though it's jahala but it also has the gharar and one of the famous contracts of a, of gharar is a ta'min insurance in principle it's gharar because you don't know what you're getting in return you're paying something every month, but you don't know if you're going to get it or not. Nothing might happen, so you keep on paying every month. And someone else might pay one month and get a whole bunch of money as a result of the insurance. So, al-jahala wal gharar. And it's important to, of course, to get into more details of this. Aw, so, you mentioned here al-jahala wal gharar. Aw, al-idrar bi ahl al-suq. 
to cause harm al idrar to cause harm to ahl al suq the people of the market and this can have also many different sour many different ways al idrar because the prophet ali sallallahu alayhi wasallam said la darar wa la dirar no harm is permissible to harm anyone and it's not permissible to be harmed and this is at all times aw igar al sudur or the hearts might have enmity towards one another uh like gambling and things of that nature so aw igar al sudur something that is would bring uh, enmity in the hearts wa nahwiha mimma yusabbib al ahqad wa at tashahun wa at tanahur what brings the envy and the disputes and hating one another and things of that nature this is the wisdom behind these buyu with these types of buying and selling that he will mention some of it here uh, he mentioned 10 types and these 10 types you can have the like of it in our daily uh, things that we witness uh, but we'll we we'll make sure that we understand what's mentioned here before we start to make uh, similarities or or to uh, to check the things that are similar so uh, so this is uh, at first we're going to do this inshallah without going to some similar um, transactions the first one al mulamasa al mulamasa from al lams touching so al mulamasa something is to be touched كان يقول مثلا and these ones it's clearly stated in the hadith of the prophet عليه الصلاه والسلام كان يقول مثلا اي ثوب لمسته او لمسته فهو لك بكذا any thawb any garment any thawb you touch is yours by this price so a bunch of garments and if i touch one that means it's yours with that price with a fixed price هذا البيع فاسد this is not a valid buying or selling لوجود الجهالة والغرر because the person doesn't know which one he's going to get and الغرر he doesn't know how much it's worth he might pay for something that worth a dollar he pay 10 or something worth 10 he pay 1 so that's why it's not permissible like this so this is al mulamasa al munabadha kan yaqul ayy thawb nabathtuhu aw nabathtahu ilay fa huwa alayka bi kadha any thawb uh, again al nabth is when you throw something right if you throw something to me and this can have many different ways say for example if it reaches me like he's standing from a distance if you're able to get this thawb to me you'll get it with that price you know something like this whether the buyer fasid la yasih wujud al jahala wal gharar you don't know and again you don't know if it's uh, what's what's the real price of it and things like this bay al munabadha so we have al mulamasa wal munabadha both What's the illa? What's the wisdom behind this? Is al jahala wal gharar both having uh, not knowing something about it and the gharar, the deception, or you don't know the outcome of things. You don't know if you're gonna get something good or something bad or so. The third one, bay al hasa, bay al hasa, al hasa from al hasa, tables. Can he say, "Irmi هذه الحصى"? فعلى أي سلعة وقعت فهي لك بكذا. وهذا البيع فاسد لا يصح للجهالة والغرب. Like someone would say, throw this pebble, and whatever the pebble uh, falls on, this is for you then with that much price. So he's going to throw the pebble on whatever, and again, this is فاسد. Why? Because of the جهالة and the غرب. So these three, the same thing, uh, wisdom behind it, الجهالة والغرب. So anything that has جهالة and غرب becomes not permissible. And maybe we can do this as a, you know, for you to to come up with some of the things that if you have in the in your your you buy and sell, you might see th- some things that might have some jahala or gar. You can bring it up, inshallah Taala, maybe next time. But this is al mulamasa wal munabada wa bayo al hasa. Is it difficult to remember these words? Al mulamasa from lamps. Say al mulamasa. المنابذة بيع الحصى so it's all buy you can say بيع الملامسة بيع المنابذة بيع الحصى 
اوكي ذا كلير طيب بيع النجش النجش also is something that we need to remember and they're all mentioned in the hadith of the prophet عليه الصلاه والسلام uh, and what's the definition of بيع النجش هو ان يزيد في السلعه من لا يريد شراءها ان يزيد في السلعه من لا يريد شراءها when a person increases the price of something Uh, or the sale or the commodity when he does not have any intentions to purchase it. He increasing the price even though he's not going to purchase it. So this is an najas, an najash. Right? So this is an najash. And uh, as he says here, وهذا البيع حرام. It's حرام لأن فيه تغريرا بالمشتري وخداعا له. تغرير غرر. You're deceiving the one that is purchasing. And this is very obvious in al-mazadat or al-mazad or auctions. Someone is there, he's just bidding. They hire him to do this. Or he's there to annoy someone or to be against someone. He just want to raise the price. And he's not there to purchase. So, and they do that actually. They, some of them, they cheat and they do that. So they bring someone just to bid without any intention to, to purchase. So that's called the najash. Uh, someone that is increasing the price when he does not have any intentions to purchase it. This is, of course, haram. If this is caught, of course, this is, uh, then it invalidates the entire thing and, of course, the person to uh, be punished or whatever. So this is Bayya and Najash. Number five. Bayya Tani fi Bayya. Bayya Tani fi Bayya. Two. Bayya in one Bayya. بيعتاني في بيع. So two transactions or two contracts in one. He says في تغرير بالمشتري وخداع الله. تغرير from الغرر deceiving the, the person that is purchasing and, and الخداع is to gain deception and so it's mainly the تغرير the غرر. So this is because of the gharar. When of course it's cheating. So a person is doing something that without the intention of it, so he's cheating. So but the, the main thing is at taghreer wal khadi'a or the gharar deception. And of course if, uh, if the seller, he makes this as a, a plot with someone, they're both sinful of course and there's no barakah in whatever they're doing. Or it might be without the, the seller knowing. A person might be doing this You know, without the intention of purchasing, so the seller has no fault in this. The bayatani fi bayya, two bayya, two buying or two contracts of buying and selling in one. Kaan yakul, like a person would say, bi'atuka hadha ala an tabi'ani aw tashtari minni hadha. I'll sell this to you with the condition that you would sell this, the other thing to me, or you purchase this from me, or whatever. So two contracts, one is a condition for the other. Or another form, أو بعتك هذه السلعة بعشرة حالة أو عشرين مؤجلة ويتفرق قبل تعيني أحلي. That means, which is بيعتاني في بيع. And this is a, a common thing, and this is why many some of the contracts are not permissible when there's no fixed price for the merchandise. A person would say, I will sell this for you uh, with 10, $10, for example, حالة, means now. أو عشرين مؤجل, or 20 if it's different. And they separated from the majlis, they're done with the deal, and nobody knows which one they chose. So if they're negotiating, that's fine. If they're sitting together, uh, If you if you purchase it now, if you pay the money now, I'll give it to you for 10. 
But if you want to make payments or you want to pay me after six months, it's going to be 20. They have to decide which one or the other before they depart. If they depart without deciding, this is, there's no contract there. The bay'ah is not valid. So, and it's not permissible. So they have to make a decision before they leave. Because some, they even would say that it's even forbidden to make this type of negotiation. No, it's valid. And it's like bargaining or whatever. So it's fine. Even, and, and there's nothing wrong with deferring the payments and increasing the price as long as it's between the buyer and the seller. So as he says here, لِأَنَّ الْبَيْعَ مُعَلَّكُمْ بِشَرْطٍ فِي الْأَوَّلِ Because the bay is, uh, is, is hanging with a condition in the first one. وَلِعَدَمْ اِسْتِحْرَرِ الثَّمَنْ فِي الثَّانِ And the, the second one, the, which is <coughs> the first one, ten now. This is مُعَلَّقْ بِشَرْطٍ This is a condition that is there. If you pay now, I will give you ten. And the second one, the twenty, which is after some time, is الثَّمَنْ غير مُسْتَقِرْ You don't know exactly how much the person would, would pay. And sometimes it's many, not just two bay'a or two, two bay'a or two transactions, it's million. Because if you come the third day, it becomes like, like the, the, the riba or the interest is multiplying forever. If you come in the third day, this, the interest will be that much. The fourth day, so according to the accumulative interest, so it becomes not one or two with the numbers of days where the contract would end with. So this is all not permissible. This is in the category of bay'atani fi bay'a. Person doesn't know the end price, one fixed price. And even some of uh, uh, the so-called Islamic finance or mortgages and things like this, they, they fall into this. You see very clearly that uh, even though they, they, they sold the contract to something else, but the person, he was deceived. He does not know that. Many people, they, when they purchased their house, it was for 100000 Then after a few years, they find themselves the house is going up to 500 and 600 because the whatever they sold the contract to, they changed the interest rate and it becomes interest, which is all another uh, different type of mess. But there's no one price. They did not agree on a price. So, uh, there are 10, so we'll stop at these five, inshallah, so that we comprehend them uh, and not to... Uh, is it clear or it's not clear? All of the ten, you would find that it's based on what's mentioned here. Uh, all of the different types that came into the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that the people used to do, which is forbidden, it goes back uh, basically to even more than that. It goes back to the, the three major things that needs to be well known because most of what's forbidden because of these three things is al-jahala, wal gharar the riba is a separate sub subject, right? So anything that has riba, anything that has jihala, anything that has gharad. And then you add to it a darar, which is, uh, it's, it's the case for in any case, something that causes harm. And then igar sudur or having enmity and so on is as a result of the jihala and the gharar and the riba. You know, the enmity, because if you buy something or you purchase something and it's halal, everything is clear, but then a person hated the other one or whatever for no reason. It doesn't invalidate the, the contract, right? But it's because of these things that causes these. That's the wisdom behind it. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade these types of transactions? Because it leads to enmity and envy and all kinds of things. If you, if you want to have 10 transactions parallel to each other, that's fine. But two in one, two separate transactions. Not that you're, you're purchasing the house and the furniture and whatever, this is fine. This is all in one contract. But buying and renting, buying and uh, if it's a condition, buying this, if you give, if you sell this, this is also not permissible. But having two bay'a in one, which is what the, the one condition for one is mentioned in the shurut, but what's forbidden, two separate types of transactions in one. Like one of the examples, rent to own. You rent, and then after 12 months, you own it. Something like that. This is two contracts in one. They have to be two separate contracts. One is finished, 
and then you initiate the second one. And uh, also the very common example is the issue of the price is not fixed. So this is more than one because the al-bay'ah, what is the arkan al-bay'ah? Is the al-aqidan, the two parties, the two sides of the contract, and thaman, the price, and the sila, the mabi'ah, the thing that you're buying. So if uh, if you, um, uh, the, when it comes to the price, if it's not fixed, that means it's it's more than one. That means it's more than one transaction. The same thing with the who are you buying from, who are you selling, uh, you're purchasing from. This is also another thing. There can be more than one transactions as a result of this, with regards to the pillars of al-bayr. So we'll take the hadith and then if there's any questions, hadith number seventy-one. And um, before also we go to the hadith, and actually the when you when you see the books of fiqh, you would find the examples that are mentioned, which is the examples that were mentioned in the hadith at the time of the Prophet والسلام, It has to be studied one after the other. Don't say, well, we don't deal with these types of examples because it's by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's been preserved because you would find similarities to it that keeps on being invented. Uh, like all kinds of things, Shrat al-Hamla, for example, when a person purchases uh, cattle, but with the condition that it's pregnant. If there are conditions, a valid condition or not valid condition. You know, it's Hamla is hidden, but the, the details of this, and you can get into the details of some of the tam, sometimes stipulations. Is it based on not knowing, or it's based on something that can be known? So things of that nature. So the Hadith عن عائشة رضي الله عنها. قالت كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يعجبه التيمن في تناعله وترجله وطهوره وفي شأنه كله متفق عليه كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يعجبه التيمن في تنعله وترجله وطهوره وفي شأنه كله متفق عليه Here, uh, this hadith is not a statement from the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام but عائشة رضي الله عنها she is stating what the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام used to like So this is a hadith, of course, <clears throat> showing the actions of the Prophet ﷺ because the hadith either a statement or actions of the Prophet ﷺ or also what he approves of. So, كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ كَانَ means that this is his norm, that he is not one time he did this. And this is always in the hadith. كَانُوا even when the atabi'i or a sahabi would say كَانُوا يَأْكُلُونَ Uh, for example, they used to eat at the time of the Prophet when they're, for example, standing or something like this. So that means it's not one time. So they used to, that means this is what the Sahaba عنهم, used to do. So can the وسلم, the significance of that is that it's so this is his sunnah, this is his way always. يعجبه, used to, يعجبه, it means he likes. Uh, he likes a tayammun, a tayammun from al yamin which is a tayammun is the act of using the right. So to he used to love or to like to uh, start with the right or to use the right. Here to use a tayammun to use the right. Fi tanaulihi in his tanaul, a tanaul from al naal. A tanaul is to put your shoes on. A naal is the shoes, and a tanaul, tafaul, is to put it on. So it has your actions in it. So when the act of putting the shoes on, can I tayammun while he's doing this? That means he would put the right shoes first, whether it's shoes or slippers or anything. Watarajulihi, then his tarajul, which is uh, combing the hair. He would comb his hair the right first, the right part of his head first. Watuhurihi, and his in his purification.
wudu, you start with the right. Ghusl, you start with the right. He would always love to or like to start with the right. Wafi, then she said, Wafi, sha'nihi kulli. And all of his affairs. So not just these things, in everything. He would like to uh, use the right. And uh, many hadith in akhd wal ata. You give with the right, you take with the right. Uh, and every matter, except the other hadith that the Prophet ﷺ would use his left hand in the matters of purification, purifying himself with najasat and impurities and things of that nature. So eating and drinking, of course, this is a must with the right hand, entering the masjid with the right, uh, all of that. And even when a, a dead person is washed, is to start to, to when you make uh, wudu for him with the right side first and the ghusl, the same thing. Uh, so uh, this is always the case. And this is one of the ways of the Muslimi. This is one of the ways of the Muslims. Something from the adab also, that a child is taught to do this from early age, that he gets used to it. So we'll say it one more time, inshallah. An Aisha radiallahu anha qalat, Kana al-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, يعجبه التيمن في تنعله وترجله وطهوره وفي شأنه كله متفق عليه صلى الله عليه وسلم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك شهدنا إلا أنت استغفرك وتبولي